Santland, the land of Sant. Hello and welcome everybody to a special tribute edition of Sandland. I'm Chris and I'm today paying homage, paying tribute to the great late genius Rosanne de Mathieu, who has recently, very recently passed away and uh, which was a tremendously sad news to the entire fragrance community um, because I think everybody and anybody who enjoys quality, skillfully done, great fragrances knows the name and knows many, many of Rosanne de Mathieu's creations throughout the years, okay? He was born in 1945. He was tremendously successful with the house of Antonio Puig, Spanish brand, and under the umbrella of Antonio Puig with different brands related or owned by Antonio Puig, some of which I will try in my own very simple and uneducated way to present to you, just randomly selected. But there is many more, you can read about them, you can enjoy them, and I truly think, and the most important is probably that um, his spirit and his legacy will continue to live and will continue to be enjoyed by anybody who, again, likes and appreciates truly masterfully created fragrances throughout the world, okay? And, um, but he goes, I think, far beyond that, because in my experience, when I, and I reviewed a good few Rosanne de Mathieu fragrances, um, my impression was always that he was never um, too much influenced by his own previous work. He always went to different directions. No fragrance, probably uh, with the exception of one, which I'm gonna pr present here, um, is reminding you of the, of the previous one. You know, it's, it's always very versatile. It's always very, very creative. He obviously had the drive to create something new, to create something uh, that is not reflecting his previous work or indeed copying anything else that was out there in the market. And guess what? He was tremendously successful doing so, okay? And not only that, because you have to know about this gentleman, this master of his art, that he was very much interested in culture, trying to trying to look at fragrances from, and the, the, the art of creating fragrances from different angles. Uh, um, he went into, into uh, Greek uh, mythology, the Roman Empire, and he was a great admirer of Francis Bacon, the, uh, the English painter. So once uh, he uh, took on the major challenge to create a, specially, a special fragrance dedicated to an exhibition uh, of the art of Francis Bacon uh, paintings, okay? And he, he was trying to um, capture the spirit of, 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 a, of a Francis Bacon painting and try to put that into a fragrance. Uh, you know, things like this, approaches like that are much more than just, you know, creating yet another um, money-making machine like so many other perfumers do and did in the past. Um, Rosanne de Mathieu, really, I truly believe that and I feel that in his creations that he was really, really coming from the creative side to create something memorable. And this is, this is exactly what he did because if you look at his body of work, the tremendous amount of fragrances that he has out there, so many that he has created in the past are still here, are still being manufactured and will thrive to be successful way beyond his life, way beyond our lives. Uh, and that is a true statement of wonderful, masterfully done quality, okay? And my aim in my little uneducated way uh, is with this fragrance review to obviously pay tribute to, to him, but also to, to cherry pick like five fragrances that I have in my collection that I wore, that I enjoyed wearing, I still enjoy wearing, will be enjoying to wear uh, many, many years ahead. And a creation or creations that, that have just something special and each of them coming from a different angle. So I, I, collect, I chose five of my, of my collection that um, represent, in my opinion, the different angles and, the, and the, the, the total beauty of Rosanne de at work, okay? Uh, one of which we could start with this one uh, from the house of Antonio Banderas, okay? Wow, under the radar, as usual by Santland, Antonio Banderas' Spirit, I think that was released in 2003 or 2004, um, a wonderful 
a really Spanish fragrance. It reminds me of, of Antonio Banderas, actually, um, the, the Spanish actor. This is a very sweet, um, refined nighttime fragrance with a dirty kick. Uh, it has, I think it has patchouli that has a fantastic dirty kick about it. So seductive, uh, just like the color of the bottle. Wonderful and, and with a tremendous uh, performance and a great quality to it, yet very affordable. So Spirit by Antonio Banderas, definitely a masterpiece and it actually won the FIFI Award of 2004 or 2005. Uh, so you know, others have acknowledged uh, the beauty of this fragrance and the fact that it's still around speaks for itself, okay, obviously. Or we could look at, um, I love this one. He created, obviously, for many, many, many uh, brands, Carolina Herrera, Nina Ricci, and Carolina Herrera also, but Paco Rabanne. Paco Rabanne, um, Excess. 1993 was the original one. This is the 2018 relaunch. And guess why Paco Rabanne relaunched this? Because they realized, my good God almighty, we have a masterpiece on our hands here. And let's relaunch because this is just eternal beauty. And it truly is the fresh citrusy spiciness that reminds me of, of Desert Wind really is, is so beautiful. Again, there's a bit of sweetness, but sweetness goes on deux mature way. Never pushy, never in your face, just intelligently, masterfully, skillfully blended, okay? An absolute pleasure to wear this. Uh, still around, um, still very popular. And again, with a performance to, you know, to, to really bow your head in front because this is an absolute and utter masterpiece by the very hands of the great late master. Let's go ahead, we have a few more. Eigner, Etienne Eigner, I didn't mention that, that brand yet, that he created for Etienne Eigner, Evolution Man 2. What a great, totally different direction of fresh spiciness. Um, and I think there is a dustiness about this fragrance that I love so much. Um, again, totally under the radar, totally uh, affordable, inexpensive, yet of tremendously high quality, okay? This smells like a billion dollars in a good way, okay? This is not pretentious, this is not posh, this is intelligent, intelligent a la Rosan de Mathieu. Let's, let's dive further. Oh, let's go back to a Golo classic, okay? He's been around for so many years in the business and obviously created some of the great, um, very early classics, okay? Um, Aqua Brava, Antonio Puiga was talking about the brand, so Aqua Brava here, a good old fragrance that has all the, the, um, the notes that make a great pine fragrance, okay? It has the tremendous quality and the very natural smell. It's an eau de cologne, it won't last you forever, but those days, that was the trend. You wouldn't be pushy, you wouldn't be leaning overboard, but you would love to smell nice, fresh, invigorating and piney, like, much like Pino Silvestre, okay? These were the pioneers of pine, I would really say so. Um, Aqua Brava, and it has this wonderful Mediterranean touch in there, like many, many of the Rosen de Mathieu fragrances. It is this wonderful temperament. There's a temperament to, to his work, uh, a creative temperament paired up with, with, with a skill set that is probably unparalleled. Um, and Aqua Brava, as simple as it is, this fragrance totally reflects that. And last but not least, um, I mentioned the brand Carolina Herrera. Now, finally, we come to it. Chic. Chic by Carolina Herrera. And um, this is probably the only fragrance that carries the backbone of a, of a fragrance that he has done before this. So, for the same brand, Carolina Herrera, uh, 212, okay, the, the original uh, 212, if you will. Chic has that green backbone, but carries it even further. It, can, it gives it a special... Um, less in your face, more refined touch. Still around this fragrance, like all the others I've mentioned, I guess, I wonder why, why? Because they're fantastic, okay? Still around, tremendous performance here again, per tremendous qu prices versus, versus quality ratio. Again, a truly and utterly beautiful creation by Rosanne de Mathieu. Um, and I wear this as much as I can, and I get tremendous compliments, not that I care that much, but. It works, okay, if that's your goal, wearing your fragrance. So, Grosan Dürr with his, with his uh, creations create, uh, ticks all the boxes that you're looking for from a refined quality fragrance, never over the top, never harsh, never in your face, always uh, uh, blended and, and created with total and utter skill, taste and intelligence 
and humor and um, that je ne sais quoi that arose under my two head, um, that refined Mediterranean special something, okay? So um, I'm not trying again in my simple, rather uneducated way to, to dig any deeper into this wonderful man's legacy, okay? Because I'm nobody to do that, but I really would have liked to, to speak a little bit about him and his creations in order to again pay tribute, homage to the great late genius of Rosam de Mathieu. And if I don't spell the name correctly, excuse me for that, or I'm sorry, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but still, the aim is to, to commemorate him, to always think about him. And again, don't be sad because he lives on uh, in his creation, in his creations, the fragrances that he has created, many of which are still around and um, there for us to enjoy and celebrate indeed. So without much further ado, adios and at the same time, viva Rosam de Mathieu. Merci. Gracias.